Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today is going to be a quick video because it is currently the real Thanksgiving. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving everybody. Uh, anyways, uh, Inkscape 1.4 was just released so we're going to do a quick overview of what is in this release. If you've never heard of it before, Inkscape is uh, one of the most popular open source projects out there. Uh, this is a vector graphics based application in the same vein as Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. Uh, you basically are drawing with mathematics. Now the cool thing about this one is again completely free open source available on a variety of different platforms and today we're going to check out Inkscape what is new in this particular release uh, one thing you may notice is the new handle system you actually have the ability to customize these now uh, you can change the color the shape and all of that that's a definitely a nice new improvement on the aesthetic side of things we got a brand new icon pack to change that one out uh, what we do is go into uh, preferences over here uh, we go to interface we go to theming uh, and then come on down here. You will find the tab here, multicolor, and you can change this now over to dash. So take a look at the icons up here. This is going to change on the fly like this. So let's go from uh, the high color one right now to dash. So if you prefer uh, a little bit more uh, muted and monochrome, got to be honest, I like the dash better than the high color. I'm curious which one do you like better between the two new icon sets. But we got this new dash icon set available as well. Uh, we also have a bunch of new um, dialogues available over here. Uh, one of the newest ones is the filter gallery. Uh, so if you want to apply filters to your scene, you now have this drill down version of it. So if you just want to do a distortion, for example, uh, you can come in and see the distortions that are available this way. Go ahead and apply them accordingly. Let's grab something else and put our torn edges on that one. Uh, so you can um, filter them out by all the filters available over here. Uh, you can apply the filters across and so on. So you now have this new gallery for displaying all of the filters available. Uh, we also have a new swatches dialog. This is for your color swatches. You can see quick preview of them all available over here. All the colors that are available on them, you can search between them. Uh, so if you're working with fixed color palettes, your swatches dialog has been updated. And then this one you actually have to turn on uh, in the preferences. It is marked as experimental. It is the new uh, dialogue, uh, sorry, um, font system that has been added in. Uh, I actually find it a little bit buggy, if I'm honest. Right now, we're looking at a single line preview or single character preview. And in that case, it works quite well. But if I go over to the, um, the other view of them, uh, I get cutoffs over here, which is unfortunate. So the text preview of it, I don't get the full size of it, even if I shrink it down. Uh, or I tell it not to show the font name. My spacing is off, so hopefully this is a bug that gets fixed. I don't know if this applies to everybody, but you get an idea of exactly what's going on here. You get a preview of what your fonts are all about. Um, you can mono it, switch, search it down to just a certain kind of font if you wish to do so. Uh, you got control over here. You can sort light to heavy or heavy to light, uh, condensed to expanded. Uh, various different fonts, or of course you can just do them all alphabetically. Uh, you can choose the text here that is previewed. Again, the only problem that I have with this, and again, this is marked as experimental, so obviously it's one of those things that it will change over time, uh, but it is, it's the spacing, obviously, so uh, hopefully that gets resolved. Uh, let me know if you get this on your computer or if it's just unique to me. Uh, but you do have a ton of control over it, so if I wanted to just show certain kinds of fonts, I can filter them down that way. I can create collections if I wish. Uh, it's going to be very nice for working with fonts uh, once it's actually got the bugs ironed out. Again, this is enabled uh, in the preferences over here. Uh, the one thing about this though uh, is you do need to do a restart to demonstrate it. So I'm not gonna show you turning it on. I've already just turned it on. And hopefully the spacing again is fixed shortly. Now, one last thing to show in the 1.4 release and that is the grid grids. Uh, so we go here to file document properties and head on over to grids. You'll see there's always been a rectangular grid. The new one here is the modular grid. Uh, this enables you to set up um, basically various different spacings uh, for your grid and set it up on a grid lining. Uh, they've also improved the axiomatic grid. So you can see that one in effect right here. So if you're doing uh, axiometric or isometric style things, you need snapping and controls. Uh, they have better uh, controls on how those are created, but we've also got this new modular grid, uh, which is for rectangular with spacing and so on. You can set that up however you wish to use it. Uh, so that is a new option in the world of grids. Uh, so that's kind of the high level features uh, of Inkscape 1.4. There's a few more things to be aware of. 
So here we are at the release notes. Uh, quick overview again, the filter gallery dialog was added in. We saw that in action. We have the new modular grids. Uh, so ultimate symmetry in action, you can now uh, find the new grid selector button uh, uh, buttons uh, quicker. I think they mean a bit quicker. Uh, more visual ways of identifying your grid of choice. For the new modular grids, you can adjust plenty of grid properties separately from height and width to horizontal and vertical gaps, including adjustments of the grid module level. Uh, enable this option by heading to the document properties. So you can see an example modular grid in action right over there. Uh, like I said, they also added some new features to the axiometric grid. Uh, it, they're in the full release host. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, the swatches dialog has a fresh new face. Now includes drop down menu with preview of color palettes. You can display them with their color names as a a list or a grid. Power users, you can now increase the tile size to uh, search for custom swatches or those of your customers to import palettes from dialogue, including those from Adobe Color Book. Uh, so improvements to the color swatch functionality. Uh, SVG font editor, for those of you who have things for font, 1.4 is your new go-to for customizations. You will find an easier route to, uh, to buttons uh, for sorting lifts and removing pairs. Uh, powerful customization at its finest. Uh, the unified font browser, again, this is currently uh, a an experimental feature. So you turn it on in preferences and then restart. Uh, you'll have visual previews. As you can see, you're supposed to have spacing. I don't know why I don't have spacing. Hopefully that is just a bug and hopefully you don't have that on your end. Uh, and then we got customizable handles. Uh, so now you can uh, customize color, stroke width, size, outline and opacity of the handles uh, when working with nodes. Uh, one thing I didn't demonstrate is the new shape builder functionality. So now you can do quick edits on raster, like pixel based images, so traditional bitmap style images with an Inkscape using the shape builder tool, load an image, select, uh, select sections that you want to isolate, uh, choose them with the shape builder to clip them. Uh, note that to edit them, you will need to release the clip and then unlink the clones. So basically it's a way of selecting portions of a bitmap image like so you're creating uh, rectangles of them that you can then use uh, standalone. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, the object properties dialog, uh, the attributes and object properties dialogs have been rolled up into one. Uh, some improvements for uh, import and export. This is nice here. Uh, very nice, actually, because Affinity Designer is my weapon of choice, if I'm honest. Uh, it can now open Affinity Designer files, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, you can now add links from one page to another within a PDF. Uh, then icon set, we saw that the new dash icon in there. Again, Inkscape is available for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Uh, that is an abridged version of the release notes. There are actually full release notes here. Uh, breaks down all of the changes, a little bit more detail. So if you want to learn more about a particular thing or how to actually use it, you're going to want to come into the full release notes here. Uh, this has you know, just more about this release. So there's definitely more than what I covered today, but we did look at all the high level stuff at least. Uh, so if you're liter interested, do check out the full release notes. I will have both of these linked in the linked article down below. Uh, once again, Inkscape available at inkscape.org. RG. So if you want to go ahead and grab this guy, uh, it is available there. Nice big step forward for Inkscape. As you can see, it has been around for 20 years now. So it's a very mature open source project. Again, it is the open source alternative to the likes of Affinity Designer, which it now works with better, as well as Adobe Illustrator. And when it comes to like the vector graphics space, it's really the only free and open source option, at least major free and open source option in that space. So let me know what you think of Inkscape 1.4. And that's it. Uh, again, happy Thanksgiving to my uh, fellow Canadians and the rest of you enjoy it next month. <laughs> Anyways, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.